Hi, welcome to 16-Bit Bench, Matt here. Today we're going to be using a 3D printer to make replacement parts. I'm going to be using the Justifier here as my first uh, guinea pig. Um, so what you can see here is the trigger is missing on this Justifier. So if we open it up, you can see the trigger would sit in this area here and would actuate this button here. Um, someone's removed it, uh, so we're going to need to print a replacement. Uh, so in order to do that, what we need to do is uh, get an idea for what the trigger actually looked like. So we're going to need to find a photo of the internals of this gun. And then um, we'll make a 3D model with it. And then we'll print that 3D model, test it out, refine it as required, and then uh, print another one and so on until we get a good prototype for what goes in here. So yes, the first thing to do is to go to the internet and look for a picture of the inside of the gun and then use that to create a model. So that's what we're going to do. Right, so we need to search for a picture of the justifier. So uh, let's look for a justifier trigger. Okay, there we go. There's a good print picture. Okay, so here we can see uh, that's what the trigger looks like. That's what we're need, going to need to replicate. It looks pretty uh simple there seems to be some kind of extrusion here for sitting in the hole in in the justifier case uh there's looks like a split here like tines so there's some you know strain relief when you pull the trigger and there's a spring on this end of a little hole to hook the, sh hook the spring through so yeah what we're going to need to do is kind of replicate that so the easiest way to do that is to take this picture and put it in photoshop uh, create a new job default size we, do, we don't know what size it needs to be yet so we're just going to guess and uh, yeah drag that picture into Photoshop make it as big as possible a bit bigger all we need is that trigger in the middle get rid of the background there so let's do a lasso of the trigger we don't need the spring so we just need this part okay so now we just got to cut, cut away uh, the edge the edge here so let's uh, zoom in a bit but no let's make it bigger I'm by no means a Photoshop expert I'm self-taught so you know if I'm doing something horrendously stupid then please let me know always happy to learn more so yeah let's do a uh, all we need is the top um, 2d layer of this so you see in the picture where you can see more of the trigger like the sides and stuff we don't need that we only need the upper layer because we're going to extrude the sides down from a 2d Im image just think of it as like almost a potato print that's what we need and then we're going to extrude that yeah so i think that is a pretty good uh, approximation of a 2d face of this trigger we're going to have to uh, extrude out a shape here uh, to make the sort of uh, pivot that it hangs on but yeah, for, for our purposes, this is pretty good. So in Photoshop CC, you can you can create a 3D extrusion from your 2D image. And there we are. So we've now created a, a rough 3D shape. I'm not gonna, in fact, I can see two points that I need to get rid of first. So let's uh, undo that. Get rid of all those layers. Okay, so we've just selected the one layer. Um, extrude a 3D layer from that there we are that's better I'm not, I've not got those whatever leftover pixels that were there so oh, what we're going to say we're going to save this out as an SVG and then we're going to import that into another piece of software so I'm going to do that now Good. can I remember how to do that that's important oh it's in the 3D menu yeah 3D export 3D layer File format uh, STL we can use, so we'll do that. And I'll just save that into my desktop. Yeah, as you can see, I've already done this once before. We'll get, give it another go. Okay, so that's pretty much all I need Photoshop for. So now I'm going to go to another piece of software. <laughs> We've uh, found an image of the inside of the gun, um, so we have we have a shape for the trigger, but we don't know what size it needs to be. So 
but we need to take some measurements of uh, the inside of the of the gun. I'm going to use a caliper for that, um, and then we'll have some idea of the depth of some of the parts and what, what kind of what kind of sizes we're going to use. Uh, so let's grab a pen and a piece of paper. So we just write down our dimensions. So there's a couple of, uh, if we look at this side of the gun, um, we need to know the depth of this hole. This hole is where the trigger pivots to, so we need to know how far a sort of uh, pin needs to go down into that hole when we print it. There's a, uh, there's a cutout here. You can see on the trigger, you see that? Uh, there we are. You see that cutout there? Uh, that's the same on both sides. So we need to know how deep that is, and that will give us the thickness of our of our trigger plus or minus say a millimeter. So we use the calipers for that, and the depth gauge is this bit on the bottom. So it's three millimeters exactly. Just take the other side. Yep, three mils. So we know we have six mil. Uh, this gap here is six mils uh, when the gun's assembled. And then the depth of the uh, hole it looks to be 5.5 so we have three millimeters 5.5 millimeters and that is the cutout that is the pin okay so uh, now if we look at the the picture that we found so I'll just put that up on screen for you uh, we can see roughly where the trigger fits within the uh, within the case, so we can get an idea of not only how uh, how long it is, but how uh, tall it is as well. So we'll do that now. Let's just re-zero this. So I, you can see from the picture that there is a uh, there's a spring that is in this hole, and then it looks like the front of the trigger starts slightly off to the edge. So sort of just over the four here. I'm not sure if there's a four on that picture. Um, and the end of the trigger sort of is in line with the bottom of the switch. So really roughly we can say, we can sort of measure it out there and it looks to be about 45, I'd say 45 millimeters um, uh, from, from nose to tip. And then the height of it, where you can see the top of the trigger is in line with this sort of part here, and the, the bottom of it is just out of the end there. So really roughly, we just get a rough idea, is 40. So we can say the trigger is probably 45 by 40 mils. Okay, so we, we, have, we have pretty much the numbers that we need to, to scale the drawing that we have. Um, so what we need to do is go is go to our uh, CAD software so we can take that that uh, STL file that we exported from Photoshop and we can plug these numbers in and we can work out what we need to do. So the software we're going to use to manipulate the image is browser based. It's from Autodesk and it's called Tinkercad. Uh, it's free to use. So we can import our file that we created, which is on my desktop somewhere. There it is. You can see we've got uh, the 2D image that we made and then a massive uh, extrusion to the back there. So using the numbers that we have, I know that this needs to be uh, 45 millimeters wide. So let's just take that all the way down. In fact, you can just type in here, 45. I know it needs to be, so this part of the image needs to be, I'd say 5.5 millimeters. So that's six. Uh, it's the, the gap in the trigger guard is six, but we want a bit of wiggle room. So I'm saying 5.5. The height, uh, as we measured it, is 45. Okay, so that's the shape I think we need. Let's, uh, let's zoom in a bit. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to put that pin through it. So to do that, I'm gonna drag in a cylinder, I'm gonna rotate it uh, 90 degrees. Just put 90 in there. So the diameter of that pin is about three, let's say 
3.5 millimeters and then our width our length is 6 plus 5.5 is 11.5 let's just call it 12 for now so now I need to bring it up to my image and I need to work out exactly where my pivot needs to be in relation to that so if we go back to the picture we can see it's uh, just off the top of the trigger again this is all complete guesswork we've got I've, I'm just gonna have to guess at it to work out where it needs to be so we'll go up that way let's turn snapping off just for this bit it may not be exact but I think that is pretty pretty spot on to where we need to be so there we are so we've built our um, we've built our 3d trigger we need to halve this object so if you look at it now it has no flat edges which means it would just be an annoying thing to 3d print um, it wouldn't it wouldn't uh, it would need a lot of support material on one side in order to have this knob here so the easiest thing to do is print it in two halves and because it's completely symmetrical well yeah it's mostly symmetrical what we can do is uh, cut is sort of shrink it halfway and then mirror it to create two objects that are uh, sort of the same but different so what we need to do is we need to halve this value here uh, it's 5.5 so it's uh, 2.75 millimeters and then what we need to do is, is just uh, arbitrarily shrink this down that way so into the middle of that will do change that back to 3.5 that value doesn't matter at all let's just take a look at the side make sure it's still a circle which it isn't uh, so what have I got here I've got 3.5 and 3.5 and 4.6 yeah that is right so if we end on front there we are so yeah so what we need to do is just is just save this off as an STL file and then put that into our into our um, slicer so that's what we'll do now okay so uh, the printer I have is a Cray, Cray Reality CR10 Creality CR10 whatever is written up here right um, it's, it's a decent entry-level printer I've, I've been playing with it for a few days now and I'm pretty much got got the grasp of it they recommend you use uh, Cura as your slicer. Um, I'm not have I don't have massive experience with 3D printers, so this is the first one I've ever owned, um, and uh, only the third or fourth one I've ever used. Uh, but yeah, it's really intuitive. I've been able to print a couple of things already um, for this sort of endeavor, so yeah, it works well for me. Um, uh, the as a as a slicer, this is pretty. Uh, pretty useful so we're import our stunning trug uh, job from Tinkercad uh, what we need to do is flatten it so let's rotate it uh, 90 degrees come on 90 degrees that way uh, let's try a face on view why won't you spin for me you spin for all the other people lay flat see that there we are lay flat and then we come up to the top so we can see there and if we come to the side I can see my little knob so what we now need to do is position that on the bed so uh, on my printer I want to put it down and uh, to the right well there's a bug that's interesting when you're in uh, when you're in top view that right slider just goes crazy okay so we're going to put it there then i'm going to uh, mirror it um, let's do it that way okay so then we'll add another another trigger half and we'll lay that flat there we are and then we'll move this the top here and move that down oh did it again so let's 
destroy this three point isometric view. There we are. So then uh, from the top, I now need to mirror that so it forms the other side. So I think that way is that way. Yeah. So that way that that forms two halves of the of the trigger. So yeah, so that is uh, that's all we need to do. So now I export this as a G code file and that will go onto the 3D printer. That's the 3D print done. Um, so I've got two halves of the trigger. Uh, I can already see it needs refinement. So if we take half the gun and I put half the trigger in it, you see the trigger's too long, so it catches on the bottom. So we're gonna have to take some of that off. And it's probably not going up high enough to, uh, to hit the button there. So if we have a look at this side. Yeah. So yeah, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to glue the two halves together with some super glue, and then we'll see how it sits in the gun. So I know that I've got the uh, if I've got the width correct, and um, then we'll look at refining the design and taking a bit off the bottom of the trigger. Um, yeah, maybe moving moving the pin around. Okay, so yeah, super glue. Uh, get my mat, and then. Going to need a couple of clamps and some glue. And we'll just be generous with the old glue there. Put a bit on there, put a bit on there. It's probably enough. Yeah, so super glue holds PLA really well. Um, it's like it's designed for it almost. Clamp number one. Clamp number two, we'll leave that for about five minutes. Probably need another clamp at the back, really. Yeah, so we'll leave that for five minutes and then we'll come back to it. We're at uh, quite a few iterations of the trigger so far. I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five ones that aren't quite right. Uh, so here I've got clamped up uh, number six. So let's just take a look. So I, I test fitted this before I glued it, just you know one half to see if it works. So, so this this iteration I'm, you know, reasonably sure fits in the in where we need it to be, and you can see it uh, it's just about right. I think I think the trigger needs to come come back a little bit more. So if we if we see this here. I think the trigger lower part needs to come back a little bit more or the uh, the eyelet, the pin needs to come forward actually, I think that's probably better. And then uh, I think also the trigger then needs to be uh, angled forwards and made a little bit thicker. So hopefully if I make those adjustments, we're looking at seven iterations to get to get the trigger the trigger part we need. And then um, once once I have that, then I'll print it up in black ABS uh, for the final installation. What we also need to do is find a replacement spring. I've ordered a spring set. Uh, so there'll be a replacement spring and a screw into this post. And that's what pulls the trigger forwards. My um, black ABS arrived, so I, I've printed the trigger in that material. Here's the original print in uh, PLA uh, that I coloured with a sharpie but mm, I think black ABS looks better so 
what I've done is if I just take the phone out and we'll take a we'll take a closer look. To see how I'll finish this off here. So there's the trigger. And you can see on the end of it is a is a spring that's just looped through a hole I've drilled in the end of the trigger, and that is then attached to this post in the gun. So from the photo we got a when we first started looking for the trigger, um, that's this is how the original trigger was was secured in there. So there was a spring and then a, a screw, and that's just a screw I've got kicking around. The spring um, I bought a set of uh, assorted springs off of um, eBay. Interest, you know, strangely enough, uh, all sorts of different sizes for this job. It was the smallest one, but then I also needed to uh, needed to cut it down a little bit. So I cut about that much off of it to get the right sort of tension. Okay, so we can now um, position the trigger in the gun and see if it works. So we'll just put it in the, so the post is in the hole there. Get the board lined up. It's a lot of things you need to get at the same time. So we take the other half of the shell Kind of lay that in while holding the trigger in, in position because the spring likes to pull it out right and then once we're in there we can just kind of maneuver it so the other side of the trigger goes into the into the hole it's designed for and then all i'm going to do real quick is just two screws into it to um to secure it so we can see how it feels uh, Okay, so that's enough to hold the gun together. Uh, so there we are. Um, there's our, our trigger and you can see it springs back and I can feel it pushing the button, actuating the button when I put it. So there's a decent action there. It's quite strong. You know, I can, I'm really putting some force on there. It's not moving at all. You know, ABS, pretty good, strong material. I'd say it's as strong, if not as stronger than the original trigger that was in there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, to me, you know, that doesn't look half bad. I'm quite happy with the way that looks. Um, I can't test the gun at the moment because I don't have any um, Mega Drive shooting games, unfortunately. But as soon as I get one, I will test it uh, just to make sure it's working. Um, but yeah, but aesthetically, at least it, it looks like it's supposed to. And that I can feel that is, you know, you've got it right there and I can feel it's pushing the button there. So I know that trigger's working. It's the right shape. It moves freely uh, in the gun. It's not rubbing or dragging on the edges. You can see it springs back into position. Almost you know, to its full, full travel there. I mean, that's pretty good. I'm really pleased with that. Um, so yeah, what we did was we um, had a justifier that someone had stolen the trigger from. Uh, we looked on the internet for some uh, reference photos for what the trigger is supposed to look like. Uh, we used the reference photo as a template for drawing a 2D outline of the trigger. And then we used uh, some modeling software called Tinkercad where you can extrude a 2D drawing into a 3D drawing. And then it probably took about eight or nine revisions to get to our final uh, version that we have in, in the gun here. So it's just a case of tweaking the size. Uh, you know, the um, if you look at the um, PLA version, so making the trigger part longer or shorter, moving the tilt of it so the nose was up or down um, we changed these prongs there were two prongs now there's only one we didn't need to we strengthened and thickened bits that looked a bit weak and just, yeah just went version by version until we got a version that that worked in the gun and sat in the gun well and when we did that i got a spring and i installed it and now uh, everything's everything's done yeah so i'd be really interested to know if you used the 3d printer to make any other sort of parts like this or anything like that that's uh that's, is pretty cool so leave a comment if that's the case uh please like and subscribe if you found the video useful you can follow us on facebook and twitter it's uh, 16 bit bench and uh yeah thanks for dropping by and we'll see you next time because these hombres are mean vicious <laughs> quick to the gun